Hi there, I'm Susie Snoop, and I go around snooping to watch people use the English language. In fact, I look out for mistakes they make in language use. It's a tough job, you know, but somebody's got to do it. Anyway, before I go snooping around this area, let me just say how glad I am to have all of you here with me on Snips and Snacks. There's a group of boys and girls over there. And they're speaking in English. How oh, nice. Time for me to get to work then. Hello? Miss Wong? Sure. Okay. Alright. Sure. No problem. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Hey everybody! Over here quick! What's up? Miss Wong just called to say that our drawing practice is at 8 a.m. tomorrow. What? 8 a.m.? That's too early. Oh, come on. You do want to win, don't you? Of course I do, but I mean, 8 a.m. on a Saturday morning, it's just too early. Why don't you start at 9? 8 o'clock is fine with me. It's fine with me too. Any objections, Ryan? Who, me? <laughs> nah. 8 a.m.? Yeah, sure. Why not? A wonderful time to practice. <laughs> Hmm. Uh, Hannah, should we bring our costumes along? Nope. Uh, will the practice be over by 11? Yep. Uh, I have a problem. You see, my dad's car is in the workshop, we'll so... You'll just have to walk to school then. Oh, Ryan. Don't worry, Abraham. I'll ask my mom to pick you up tomorrow. That'll be great. Thanks, Aina. Okay, guys. It's time for tea and biscuits. Last one here is wash up. So, <sighs> your dad's car is in the workshop, huh? Oh no, I'm the last one in again. Why does this always happen to me? Hmm, poor table. I hope Ryan didn't break it. Well, here's my snoop report. Let's start with what Ina said. Miss Wong just called to say that our drama practice is at 8 a.m. tomorrow. When Ina said our drama practice is at 8 o'clock tomorrow, she was actually making an announcement. You see, you announce something when you want to make it official. You want everyone to know or to tell when something will happen. Let's see that again. Miss Wong just called to say that our drama practice is at 8 a.m. tomorrow. So, the form that Aina used was the sentence, Our drama practice is at 8 a.m. tomorrow. And Aina's function was to make an announcement, or to announce. Remember what Ryan said when he heard the announcement? He wasn't too happy, was he? What? 8 a.m.? That's too early. So, what was Ryan doing? Yes, he was complaining something that many of us do often. We complain when we are unhappy about something. Let's listen to what Ryan said once again. What? 8 a.m.? That's too early. So, Ryan used the form, what? That's too early, to perform a function of complaining. What he did was to complain. All right, someone made a suggestion in the conversation. Any idea who it was? No? 
Okay, watch this. Why don't you start at night? It was Ryan again. He suggested that they start drama practice at nine. When we suggest something, we tell everyone our ideas about what they should do. Here's Ryan's suggestion again. Why don't we start at nine? Well, why don't we start at nine? Was the form that Ryan used to make his suggestion. In other words, he used it to suggest a time that he thought would be better for the drama practice. Sorry, Ryan. No one agreed with your suggestion. Here's one more. Remember the end of the scene when Ina and her friends ran off for tea? Ah oh, no, I'm the last one in again. Why does this always happen to me? Oh, poor Ryan. He was expressing something called regret. We express regret when we are sorry or sad about a situation. Here's Ryan again. Ah oh, no, I'm the last one in again. Why does this always happen to me? Why does this always happen to me? Those were the words that Ryan used. That was the form that he used. The function in this case was to express regret. So next time you speak, remember to get your forms and functions right. Okay, it's time for me to carry on snooping. He saw a dead crow in a drain near the post office. He saw an old man gasping for air. and a baby barely able to breathe in a crowded morning clinic. This land is so rich. Why should we suffer like this? I want clean air for my grandchildren. I want the damn fools to leave the forest alone. I want the trees to grow, the rivers run free, and the earth covered with grass. Let the politicians plan how we may live with dignity, now and always.
I think I need some help with this poem. I know. I'll call my friend Vasanta. She's good at stuff like that. Hi, Susie. How are you? Still snooping around? Yep, that's what I do best. Okay, so what's up? Well, I need a favor from you. Could you tell my friends about the poem The Dead Crow by A. Summerside? Sure, that's no problem. Bye, Susie. Hi, I'm Mrs. V, and I'm here to tell you something about the poem entitled The Dead Crow. In the first stanza, the poet is upset for several reasons. In the first place, he sees a dead crow lying in the drain and then he sees an old man and a baby both sick with breathing difficulties. He's also upset to see that so many people are sick and suffer despite the resources this world has. In the second stanza the poet demands for clean air for his grandchildren he wants the rivers to flow freely and the trees to grow well in the forest. He also demands that the politicians, that is the people in power, be responsible for the actions to ensure a safer future for generations to come. The dead grow, the sick old man and the baby and the crowded clinic all show that the air is polluted. There are several symbols in the poem. Let's see what these symbols are. The black color of the crow symbolizes bad luck. The old man represents the past generation. And the baby, it represents the future generation. The politicians, they represent the people in power, the people who are responsible for the environment and for future generations. The poet repeats the word want to show his right to demand for a clean and green environment, especially for the future generation. And finally, what about the theme of the poem? The theme is all about a clean and safe environment. It is important that we keep our environment safe and clean for future generations. They need fresh air to breathe and clean land to live on. So what are the lessons that we have learned from this poem? The moral lessons. Lesson number one, that man must not pollute Mother Earth, that man must not cut the trees in the forest, and finally, man is responsible for all his actions, and that he must always remember that a safe and healthy environment is important. But, oops, I forgot. Hi, Susie. I'm done. Wow, thanks. That's great. I'll call you next time when I need help with literature, okay? Yeah, sure. Bye, Susie. Bye. I still have work to do. Ah, the two boys over there. I think I'll have to get closer. Ibrahim? Yes, but my knee is paining. Ow. Where does it hurt? 
Here? No. Here? Ow! 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 Oh. Right here. Ah, ah. Oh. Oh. Sorry, Abraham. I just wanted to make sure. Ow, ow, ow. Uh, would you like me to examine the rest of your leg? No, thank you, Dr. William. I'll live. There's something wrong with that ball. It's more heavier than usual. Really? But it's the same ball we played with yesterday. Maybe you're the one who's heavier. No way. <laughs> Shh. I hear something. That's my mom calling me. Okay, Abraham. Time to go. I'll race you home. Hey, wait for me. That's not fair. Please, come back. My Snoop report tells me that Ibrahim made two mistakes. Did you spot them? Yes, but my knee is paining. Do you know what the mistake is? Yes, the words is paining. It's bad English to use, is paining. Some people like to say, Ayo, my head is paining. Others like to say, Ado, my tooth is paining. And it pains me to hear that. What Ibrahim was trying to say was that he had injured his knee. So, this is how he should have said it. Are you alright, Ibrahim? Yes, but my knee hurts. So do not ever let me catch you saying, it is paining, again. You should use, it hurts instead. Here's the second mistake. There's something wrong with that ball. It's more heavier than usual. Hmm, Ibrahim used the word more incorrectly. You see, when we use the ER form of an adjective to compare something, we should never put the word more in front of it. We say longer, not more longer. We say bigger, not more bigger. So, Ibrahim should have said heavier, not more heavier. There's something wrong with that ball. It's heavier than usual. Really? So remember, more and the ER form cannot go together. If you still have problems with this point of grammar, ask your teacher for help. I met up with some of the children again, and I heard William use an idiom. Hey Ryan! Hi! I'm sure you have green fingers. Huh? Ryan thought that William meant that his fingers were actually green. But William was actually using an idiom. Now, an idiom is a group of words that has a different meaning from what it would mean if you understood each of these words separately. Idioms add color to language. They make language interesting and lively. Let's go back to Ryan's green fingers. When you say someone has green fingers, it does not mean that his or her fingers are green in color. No, it has a different meaning altogether. It means that he or she is good at looking after plants so that they grow well. Watch out for the next idiom. Uh, you know, William, I'm just so good at getting plants to grow. I mean, look at my beautiful garden. I mean, all my neighbors always stop to admire it. I'm just so talented. Oh, Ryan, stop blowing your own trumpet. Huh? Aha! William used another idiom. Blow your own trumpet. It does not mean that you're actually holding a trumpet and blowing it. No, no, no. It has a different meaning altogether. It means that you're praising yourself for achieving something. Psst. People won't really like you if you always blow your trumpet. Anyway, coming back to our friends, after a while, surprise, surprise, Ryan used an idiom. Okay. Let's go. 
Oh, oh. oh, William, you're as blind as a bat. <laughs> William's as blind as a bat. Again, as before, it does not mean that William is a bat or that he's blind. No, no, no. It has a different meaning altogether. It means that William was unable to see very well or unable to see at all and did not notice the plant in front of him. Oops! Time to go! For more fun and laughs as you learn English, look out for episode 2 of Snips and Snaps. Bye!